this whole green schools movement really sits at the confluence of two fundamental imperatives for modern society. One, to change how we live, the quote sustainability challenges, and the second is to change how we educate. The industrial age school, and that's the only accurate label to give it, is still the school we've got today. I mean, think about it. Why would anybody organize a school as grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, grade five, grade six, which of course what it was originally was Kate, it was one to six. Why would somebody organize a school like that? Well, obviously, every child learns at the same speed, right? So they should all move in lockstep, you know, through one grade to another. Uh, that's not too good an assumption. Oh, well, it's just natural to organize your curriculum in these rigid box so that everybody should study the exact same thing at the exact same time. Oh, that's a pretty dumb idea. Or how about, ah, how will we know our schools are working? Well, we'll test them all. By the way, the standardized testing movement didn't just start in the last 10 to 20 years. It's kind of gotten amped up in the last 10, 20 years. There's a quote from 1825 from the governor of Massachusetts who said, 1825, not 1925, in which he says, our schools are failing. The answer is we must test more rigorously. If you look at the history of the industrial age school, it was modeled after the internet of its time. Here's what I mean by the internet of its time. The phenomenal innovation in how work occurred that radically revolutionized work, how work was done. From 1750 to 1820, labor productivity in England rose 125 fold, not 125%. It was over 100 times greater. Why? What had happened in those intervening 75 years that totally revolutionized work? I call it the internet of its time because just as the internet kind of revolutionizes how business works today, this totally revolutionized business. What was it? Think grade one, grade two, grade three, the assembly line. The modern school, which is about 200 years old, was explicitly modeled after an assembly line. It was not an accident. It was very conscious, very intentional, and if you could put yourself in the shoes of people saying, hey, we have this growing urban population, the industrial age is really upon us, factories are here, we should have some uniform education for everybody, so what? They could go to work in the factories. School was not about education. The industrial age school system was much more about socialization than education. That's why they literally had bells on the walls to get kids used to going, you know, minute by minute, hour by hour, according to a rigid process, from A to B to C to D to grade six, you're out of there and you're into the factory. Now that all seems like a long time ago, but really, if you look at how much the world, you look at how much business has changed. I spent a lot of time in modern factories. Guess what? They don't look like factories 200 years ago at all, particularly in really innovative industries. If you look at how much the world has changed, you look how much school has changed, guess what? What are you struck by? Which of the two has changed vastly less? I think in most of our school systems, we still have grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four. And by the way, we still judge how kids are doing by a standardized assessment. Think about an assembly line. There's only two things that define a good assembly line. How fast is it and how uniform is it? You don't want everything coming off the assembly line to look a little different. That's a bad assembly line. And you want to maximize productivity. Guess what two imperatives are baked in to the industrial age school? Standardized assessment of, standardized assessment of learning. And if we can do it faster, it's better. And if we can do it with less productivity, with higher productivity, it's better. So I just use this to illustrate. These are deep issues. And, and in some way, to me, they're just as critical as the sustainability issues. Because in a way, and this is what that old Chinese proverb is all about, in a way, school defines society. 